seconds. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of The Eventful Life. Happy Thursday to you. I hope that you guys are having a great week out there. Um, as you know, we have been focusing on um, back to school and um, moms in business, uh, women in business. So kind of focusing on that um, back to school efforts and figuring out, you know, everything with our kids and then focusing on our work life um, as far as trying to manage business, you know, trying to manage work. And so, you know, it's been some great conversations thus far for the month of August. And today is just getting better. So <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> to have Kelly, uh, Kelly Peck with me today. She is the um, owner of Emerson Reese Creative. And we are talking today about mompreneuring through crisis because guys, you know, let, let me just kind of set the stage for you here. <laughs> Women out here, and particularly moms, have been dealt a lot in these last um, six to seven months. We, we've had to figure out a lot. Um, we're still figuring out a lot. Um, as it relates to parenting our children, um, you know, the, the emotional and social stability of that, uh, making huge decisions about uh, their educational environment, as well as trying to figure out what in the world we're going to do with ourselves. <laughs> So, you know, I know, Kelly, we tend to put ourselves on the back burner, but the reality, and I, I quoted this um, when I was sharing, you know, about our episode today, but the reality is that women who are moms right now in this climate, we're really concerned about, you know, our careers, like our career path, What's up 100%. ahead in the future for us? And that's regardless of whether you are um, a woman who works from home or you are a woman who is out in the field or, or working, you know, in a office, so to speak, right, uh, for a company. Um, I, I, I don't know about you, but I can totally empathize. And it really um, just makes me wonder, you know, what is going to happen as it relates to women who are trying to, you know, make sure that, of course, their kids are taken care of. Like that is that is definitely of utmost importance to us as moms. But I would be remiss to say if we also didn't have, you know, a grave concern about what's also going to happen with the efforts, the fruits of our labor that we've worked so hard for as far as our career and our businesses and just the mark that we're trying to leave out here in the world beyond being. Sure. So, you know, I know that you, that you have, have two little ones and you also, you know, are rebuilding your business, you're rebranding your business and just a lot of great things that you're focused on right now. But let's talk about how this has kind of impacted you and your home. Yeah, sure. So, twenty twenty, we'll never forget. Um, ever, ever. Our kids. Well, my kids might not remember it so much. I mean, Emerson, my son is three, and Isabella will be five in three weeks, which is insane that she's going to be five. Um, so I think they remember. Right? It. I know. I know, and. I think that she'll remember it. Um, he may, you know, yeah. uh, but he's my go with the flow kid. Isabella is my carbon copy. She's type A. She's in charge. She is a future entrepreneur, CEO. She will be doing something on that it. level. Yes. She tries to do it in our house on a daily basis. So, um, <laughs> Listen, but, raise them right, Kelly. Raise them right. right. Yeah, no, I mean, she's already gotten the whole speech it's okay if somebody calls you bossy that is not a bad thing that is an okay trait to have as a female that means yes. you're strong and you're fierce that's right so um yeah i mean it's been intense like for us on the kid front um my kids go to a monastery school 
and we love it there. Yeah. And we're really lucky because it's small. And before COVID, it was about 60 kids. And that was from infant all the way to six years old. And my kids were in two different classes. My son was in the tulips class and um, my daughter was in pre-K. And our school was open until the Friday of Easter. Mm. So I feel like, like you, you had been in it yeah. for eight weeks versus me. Yeah. And, you know, with, there were 60 kids at that point in time at the monastery school, it went down to about 10 and then they had to shut down the school, which is like, we understand that. Yeah. Um, and being a business owner, I just wanted the school to stay open. Like I'll pay you whatever you want to, yeah. to stay open, yeah. to keep a cash flow. Right. Which because the director I mean, is looking at me. Right. Cause let, let's, I mean, yeah. let's think about it. Like the fact that they were open, it was allowing you yeah. to still run your business, you know? Totally. And so then once the pandemic hits, right. And, and, you know, let me just preface, you work in the event industry. So, yeah for those who are not familiar, um, the event industry has been decimated by mm -hmm. the pandemic. So not only are you being driven to a halt by the pandemic itself, but then once the school decides to close, then it's like, whoa, okay. Yep. You're getting hit on two fronts. Yes. No, totally. I mean, for me, I was ramping up in my business and then ironically, I got all the branding for Emerson Reese Creative, um, which my company is named after my kids. And I got my branding on March 17th. Thank you. And I'm like, the word with that and just kind of ripping off the band-aid and going, you know what, I need to celebrate this. This is important. And, you know, but at the same time, like, yes, our industry as a whole, it's been absolutely devastating to watch it even on a daily basis now. Right. Um, but I feel like we're in a different normal. It's the greatest thing about the events industry is we MacGyver everything on a daily basis. Right. right. And we will get through it. We will yeah. come out stronger. There will be other protocols that will be put in. There are so many people out of work, but at the same time, we will survive. There yeah, we're survivors, like things. for sure. For sure. For Our sure. industry is a bunch of survivors. And we. I always just say we've been pivoting long before the pivot became famous. Every day. <laughs> yes. We're professional pivoters. Yes. I mean, you know, it's for sure. I mean, yes, planning events is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of hard work. Uh oh, Kelly, you there? So, but that's the main thing that I love about events. I like that you can MacGyver, you can do some cool stuff. You have to move stuff around. Yeah. Um, so but what, yes. but what changed at home? Like once everything kind of came to this screeching halt and you realized, okay, we're going to be in this kind of new setting for a while, like not just a couple of days, but a couple months now, you know, um, you know, immediately, I mean, think about it on the parental front and on the career front, I'm sure things had to change. Like what were some of those? Cause I know for me, it was like, oh, you know, whoa, like, okay, nope, not gonna, I was like in the midst of getting ready to have a live event in a new city that I just moved to. And that was like, nope, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so yeah, tell me what was the I mean, that changed for you? So with events coming to a halt, like contracts stopped and then it was like, okay, what are we going to do now? And then to be quite honest, my husband is in IT and there were many days where I wanted to trade and go to work and he could stay home. Yeah. That's me being uber transparent. Um, yeah, but when it came to a halt, the beauty part 
of being an entrepreneur for four and a half years, I wanted immediate access to my kids all the time. Yeah. And I didn't want to have to look at someone and go, well, my kid's sick for the fourth day in a row and I have to stay home or it's snowing outside in Virginia and, mm -hmm. you know, somebody's going to stay home. I mean, we decided to do that for ourselves when Isabella was very small and I wanted that. I wanted to have access to my kids. Yeah. So it was tough. I mean, the first day all day on Zoom, was, it was bad. Yeah. I, I mean, it was like Jason got home and it was like death come one in the house. Like it was bad. I mean, stuff's everywhere. I'm pissed off. The kids are upset. Yeah. They're crying. I'm looking at him going, and we have to do this for months. Like, we're not going to survive. Like, man down. World War II has happened. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, we just, and I remember he's like, where's dinner? And I like lost it, you know? And it wasn't intentional. It was just, it was six o'clock. <laughs> And, and you're we, like, I've been eat, at war eat, all day eat, and you want dinner. <laughs> it has to eat at six. Right. So yeah. he was like, well, I'll go get it. And I'm like, no, no, I'm leaving. And I swear I'll be back in a half an hour. I will not leave you I try. Because he's like, at, the, at this point, know how to I'm sure many, yeah. many husbands have, have felt that, um, that sense of like, okay, if she goes out of the door, is she coming back? Like, ever. Yeah, there were a lot like, of those like, days. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but like when you become a new parent and you have all these grandiose ideas of what you're not going to do and what you are going to do, like for me, when I was pregnant, I was like, my kids are never going to sleep in the bed. My kid sleeps in the bed every night. Bed regularly. <laughs> but I want to sleep through the night. So yeah. you have to go through that phase of figuring it out and the well oiled machine comes to a halt. And, you know, for the Zoom was really great. Isabella was really into Zoom. And then about three weeks in, I'd say the word Zoom and she would just cry. Like she just couldn't Aww. handle it. And I'm like, oh, okay. No. Yeah, and she's four, you know? So yes. for me, the advantage of having younger kids like I wasn't going to do that to her. So yeah. the cool thing was, is the monastery school would send home all the different crafts and the curse of writing and all that. So yeah. we'd work on it together and I could get done quicker. Yeah. With her and the one-on-one -on -one attention she appreciated. And then with Emerson, like getting him to sit through a 45 minute circle time. I like, I had him in a headlock one day and we're being recorded. Like there's other parents on the phone and like, this is not for Kelly. We're not doing this anymore. And he knew the questions, but he wouldn't answer. And I like, I've referred to it as it was like an angry drunk hyena, like trying to get him to like watch the computer screen. And so right. we stopped that after a week and then we just worked on the work at home together. But I got them on a schedule, yeah. just like we all do. Is yeah. so, and we have those moments. I mean, it, and then we, we literally are all, all have been as as moms and just women in business. We all have had moments where we just feel like fish out of water. Like, like this is all new. Yes. I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I just we we all need a moment, you know, um, to just kind of yep. figure out things and you know, make sure, and, and, and also what it made me realize too, Kelly, is that it also shows the human side to our kids that we yes. are still human. Like, even though we're moms and I know they think that we wear capes and, and jumpsuits and fly through the air, but we are human beings and we, and we literally are, are, are figuring this out or making it up as we, as we go right now. <laughs> and greatest thing about parents, well, I get a do-over tomorrow and I get a do-over again and again, and it just works itself out. And we got on a schedule because they were home with me for 13 weeks. Wow. And
days than, you know, not so great days. And we got on a schedule. I mean, you know, we would go for walks and we, we did a car ride every day because that we needed sanity in our house. And my kids, thank God, I don't have to listen to Blippi in the car anymore. Like we get to listen to Prince and Tom Petty and Emerson yeah. Hart and all those things. So, but they appreciated the ride too. Yeah. You know, that was a huge thing for us. So, and we'd still do the schoolwork and then we would figure it out. And in May, we, um, my mom lives on a farm and she hadn't seen them in 101 days. Mm. And like Nana is everything to them. I know we've had this conversation before. Yeah. And we started going out two times a week to the farm. Yeah. Because I don't have to police them to like stay on the path in the neighborhood. <laughs> right. Still in the road. A bit more open. Still in the yeah. road. Yeah. Which right. those are exactly. the, those are the so, beautiful things when you, once you, yeah. once it does start to click and you do figure yes. out like some semblance of a rhythm or a routine. Um, and I think particularly what you said about the fact that you chose, you know, the, the entrepreneurship or the, or the mompreneur lifestyle. Like, I think yeah. there is something to that because the great thing is that we do have flexibility within our own yeah. schedules to kind of reimagine or recreate things when crisis does hit, you know, and, you know, maybe that's yeah. not a pandemic, but I'm sure we each have had personal crisis that has hit before, you know, whether it's a death in the family or, you know, something happens with a family member, a loved one becomes ill or whatever the case may be, you know, um, then our ability to adjust and be flexible, it it really does become a benefit, you know. Um, My my thoughts always go to the, the moms who are working a nine to five and, you know, don't necessarily have the reins over their own flexibility. Like don't, don't have that, that flexibility readily available. It's like, what do you do and how hard a decision that must be to then feel like you're having to choose between your child, you know, your child or your children and your career, you know? Yeah, I I feel it's hard being a female from birth to, you know, throughout your life. And then it you get the questions of, are you gonna have kids? And like, why is that any of your business? What my choice is, whether to have kids, not have kids, how to raise them, when you're gonna do it. it, it just, and then you get pregnant and you think you're already pressured and then it's 10 times worse and then you have the kid and then everybody's got an opinion and it's like, yes, can I just I figure it out? I know. The, the, and then you find your tribe. You right. find the people who understand and you can call when you literally are riding down the highway and you have half a face on of makeup and you're going to meet a client yeah. because it took you 25 minutes to get a kid to fasten their seatbelt because they wanted to do it on their own. Mm. You know, it just, it's, and you just figure it out. But at the same time, you have to do what works best for you. Like for Mm. me, I was in a situation where I had an amazing opportunity and I wanted to go and do that and be around other females that had kids that got what I wanted to do and all of those things. And you know, Jason worked a good job so we could do that and I could build my business, yeah. book a business through and do all of those things. Yeah. Some people don't have those opportunities. Yeah. I was lucky to have that. But again, I didn't want to feel like I was pushed against the clock. Right. And, right. you know, you used to, you used to work in, in corporate before you, before you actually step, you know, moved out to yeah. do business, you worked in corporate. And I can't remember at that time, did, was Isabel already here by that time? Yeah, so I worked at, um, I did. I was a membership director yeah. for a couple of years at a private club and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And, I, and it was a great nine to five job, but my niece lived with us. Mm-hmm. So we got married and then 22 days later, we've got a nine year old and found out we were pregnant with Isabel. I, I inherited all these kids. <laughs> So we got 
But what was great about my niece living with us is now I totally know what to expect when my kids go to school. Yeah. Like, I know what to expect with the homework. I know what to expect that they're super difficult because summer's coming around and they just want to be done. Like, mm -hmm. I get all, all of those things now. So um, we just, I had always told Jason, I want to go work at an amazing event planning company yeah. or I want to start my own thing. And I went to go work for an amazing company yeah. with other women who I love and that's what i decided to do but i had to build that book of business right and right and i think that's the, that's the part that you know right now can be kind of unsettling for yeah. women is when you look back you know and i'll be honest i've done it myself when you look back at the work that you have put in right like right. like you just said you know you you knew what your goals were so you set out to build that book of business or you set out to, you know, get that that opportunity at that job because that was your next career step, you know. And so I know a lot of women are having these moments where they're like, I busted my behind to get here. And yeah. now I'm feeling some kind of way because I've got to, you know, I've either got to take a step back I've got to scale, you know, scale down yep. or for some, in some cases they have had to leave altogether and now explore starting a brand new career because that career just no longer um, suits them where they, you know, where they are in their circumstances. Like it, it doesn't serve them anymore. Um, I, I know that that is a lot for us as women to deal with. And, and I mean, and you've experienced some of it because you're rebuilding, you know, rebuilding, um, sure. as well. And, and even when we're in a rebuilding phase, we, we are still trying to go like a hundred miles an hour, but we're reminded that we can't go a hundred miles an hour, especially when our kids are like, Hey mommy, Hey mommy, Hey mommy. <laughs> no, 100%. I mean, I was just having this conversation before we got on the phone and I feel like we have, I have this conversation a lot. It's, it's one of those things. So another entrepreneur, she likes to work late like I do. Yeah. And I was teasing her. I'm like, you gotta put your emails, hit the button that says eight o'clock because I laugh when she sends something to me at four 30, because I do that right. I, because nobody's bothering me. It's not mommy. Yep. It's, my husband can't ask me for anything and right. I just like to stay up late mm -hmm. so I can get so much more done at that point in time. And then I don't I call it the mom happy hour. Like our happy yes. hour is like in the wee more hours of the morning. <laughs> no, totally. But then I set myself up to be exhausted the next day and right. it's just, it's not healthy. So, you know, you go through these phases yeah. and what has helped me is getting on a schedule, even pre COVID before COVID right. the beauty part, if I can find blessings in COVID yeah. is I've gotten the time with my kids. Yeah. There were some days I wasn't thankful for that, but I am very thankful for yeah. that. Yeah. And you know, they're so, they're never going to be this age again, no matter if your kids are teenagers right or going off to college or just having that extra time to spend with them. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that. I like, I've gotten to read, I go to like, I joined a gym. I go to the gym a couple of days a week. I started that about a month and a half ago. Cause right. I know you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. definitely the blessings are, are there. Um, sometimes we have to remind, like you said, remind ourselves of them, especially when we're in like, you know, uh, Sergeant General, you know, we're like in, in drill sergeant mode and we're like, ah, you know, but, um, but the blessings have definitely, they definitely are there and make no misnomer to anyone who's out there, you know, listening. Um, I know I'm eternally grateful for my children. I, you know, do not make any qualms about that. I, I love them beyond breath, you know, um, but I'm also human and I also was an entire human being before, sure. before they came here. Um, so I, I can appreciate our, our moms and our women out there who may be struggling through some of this. 
um, and just trying to do the best that they can, trying to figure it out, you know. Yeah, um, and you should have a support system around that and be supported and know that you're not alone. Yeah. And it's okay. Like, the interesting part about COVID is we're all in it. Yes. Everyone is affected. That's so true. And for me, I'm very lucky. My kids, we've made the decision like before COVID that Isabella was going to start kindergarten at the monastery school because mm -hmm. she's doing so well and she loves it. And I love the fact that it's only 20 kids. Right. It, and, right. you know, she'll go to elementary school. And she'll get to walk to school, which is really cool. Oh, wow. Really cool. So and she's going to be a big girl. <laughs> yeah. What, what, I mean, my husband bought his, the townhouse so his kids could walk to school. That's so At awesome. 30 years old. Like, he's a unicorn. <laughs> like, what guy thinks about those kinds of things? Right. But, um, you know, they're going to start, and they're at school today. That's why it's quiet here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Just like, just so you know, like there, there's a total difference between when they're there and when they're not. Right. But you know, when they were home for 13 weeks, yeah. it was okay. Mommy's going to go do circle time. Cause that's what I, cause that's the only way they could relate to it. Right. Right. And you know, we're, was I on the phone with clients and I literally, it was a couple of weeks ago, like Emerson were almost done potty training, but like massive blow up, man. Like it was bad. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, you yeah, know, I got to go. I can call you back in 10 minutes, but I got to go. And oh, you got to love those moments where you're like, yeah, okay, yeah I mean, there, there's nothing I can say right now that's going to salvage what <laughs> is happening behind the scenes here. <laughs> right. But it's also, I think people who don't have kids have found more grace and accepting that mm -hmm. this is our calling this is who we are and you know i think our world like yeah it's our world and now you're just kind of living in it in a different way yeah and um yeah i mean the struggle can be real i mean the struggle is still real even with them going to school but yeah. it's we were talking about halloween the other day and he, jason's like how's that gonna work and i'm like it's just another thing that is a disappointment of 2020, right? right? Because it might not be any different. And I'm like, you know what? We're buying costumes. We'll yeah. blow it out at the house. And if we have to parade them around I the neighborhood, say, I think that's that what we're doing. Really cause us to, again, and I, you know, I've, I've used this word a lot lately, but I really think even with the holidays coming up and, and things like that, it's caused us to reimagine how that looks. You know, like, like you said, we'll dress them up, we'll parade them around the living room, like we'll stand on the doorstep and wave to the neighbors, you yeah, know. Yeah, we get in the car and drive around and like, we'll do Like something. whatever we have to do to still create the experience so that at the end of the day, that experience isn't lost, right? It isn't just like, oh no, it's, it's canceled. Like it's right. not canceled. It, we just have to do it differently, you know? Correct. Um, and I feel like Kelly, what, you know, this exact thing that you're saying applies to our careers as well. It's like, yes. no, it's not canceled. You just have to reimagine how you're going to do it differently now, you know? Um, and I know for some, it's like, the thought of that makes you want to just go lay in a corner, yes, mm -hmm. and ball your eyes out because yeah. I probably was one of them. But <laughs> we've all cried, we've all gotten upset, we have all done nothing, we have all binge watched Netflix for weeks. We yeah. have, but we, you know, it's like you got to do those things to get through it, right? Because with the darkness, there does come light, and you just you have to go through the motions and it's not an overnight process. It's just the evolution of it. I love that. The evolution of it. Like, mm -hmm. like if it's, it's almost like, Oh, so you're at the part where you're like pissed off and mad. Oh, you're right on track. You know, it's like, <laughs> exactly. So, so it's like, if you want to know, like, are you, are you doing, are you doing this thing called frustration? Are you doing it right? Yes, you are. You're right on track. So just keep going, you know, <laughs> but you have to go through and experience each one of those emotions. Like you said, 
so that you can, you know, kind of get it out and then realize like, okay, I'm still here. So I'm still here to fight another day. And like we said at the beginning, we'll survive this, right? And I I believe that a lot of us um, women in business, mompreneurs, that we're actually going to come out of this even stronger. I totally agree 100%. I mean, the only thing that I can really compare it to is when the economy had tanked in 2008. Mm. It's similar, but this is more devastating. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's what the, I think where people get concerned as well as I do, we don't have a magic crystal ball of when it's going to go away. Yeah. And it's not, we are never going to have the same thing we did before COVID. It's just, it's not going to ever be that way. And I think of it like 9-11 when I used to be able to go to the gate at the airport. Oh my God. I was just talking to somebody about yeah. that. I was well, like, remember this? <laughs> yeah. And we remember it, but I don't think about it anymore because I haven't been able to go to a gate in almost 19 years. Almost a decade, right. Or over a decade, actually. Or over a decade. Yeah. So, you know, it it's that new normal of things of what is to come. But the cool thing about COVID is seeing all the new reinvention and- yes the imagination and spark of technology Technology, and cool things that are being developed and just really protocols for our industry because we don't have one. It's, you know, with the bailout with Congress and all of those things. So there's good things that are happening, but at the same time, I mean, you can, you can either go down the rabbit hole. Yeah which I used to do a lot in March and April. Yeah. Or you can pay attention to it and figure out how it's going to apply to you and how you're going to move through it. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm like that most of the time. There are days where I'm not. Right. But again, you have your tribe yeah. and you know, when they were home for 13 weeks, Jason worked every other week yeah. and his world was, I mean, they were thriving. So he was working and I'm so thankful for that. And, but there were days when he'd be home for a week and I'm like, I am leaving for a day. I am going over to my best friend's house and I'm going to work there and I'll be home at like nine (laughs) o'clock. You get bedtime. You're like, you got it, buddy. Here you go. (laughs) So, and but I needed that for my own sanity yeah. and it gave him time with the kids alone because that's uber important. Yeah. Yeah. So because their default time. by most kids default is mommy. Like yes. if you're anywhere within, within I sphere, like where they can see you or hear you <laughs> yeah, totally. or smell you, <laughs> yeah. then they're like, where is my mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, 100%. 100%. Oh, so <laughs> it, was, it was good for them to go through those motions. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, I, again, it's figuring it out. And it's yeah. okay if it's not what works for us doesn't work for someone else. No, everybody has to figure out their own, their own yeah, thing. Totally. I want to leave you with this last question. Um, and you know, see what your, you know, what your thoughts are and what your advice is um, to other women out there who are trying to figure this, you know, figure this stuff out. I was reading an article and they shared that as a result of the pandemic, 20% of moms are finding themselves out of a job due to being the caregiver that ultimately had to stay home with the kids, had to give up their business because of the kids, which in turn will make it more challenging for them to re-enter the work workforce. I want to know what are your thoughts on this and, you know, do you feel like as a result of this, moms are going to become devalued as an asset in the workforce? I feel as being a mom, the expectations that are put on us versus our husbands, dads, sometimes is vastly different. Yeah. And... I don't want to think that we're devalued 
because yeah. they should be hiring moms because of the fact of what we do on a daily basis and do it with grace. Yeah. And people don't even, I, I don't think sometimes people understand what we do for our kids, for our families, for our businesses, our workplace and so forth, because we do it a lot in silence. Yeah. We just do it because mm. we know it has to get done. That's and I think that for women, moms in general, they're either going to completely pivot yeah. and they're going to create something on their own where they can have more of that life balance and stay home with their kids and have mm -hmm. access to them, or they're going to go and work somewhere else, or they're just going to table it for now mm -hmm. and look at it down the road in a couple of months because I went through that. Mm -hmm. I went through that in the 13 weeks that my kids were home, so many people wanted so much of me. Yeah. And I couldn't do that. They I were. had to focus yeah. on them right. and the house. And because that doesn't stop. Right. And it's like a machine. <laughs> it's like a machine. But I am also a big believer and for stay at home moms. Mm -hmm. And then stay at home moms that homeschool their kids. They should win the lottery every God day. God bless them. I had I had the utmost respect for the, for them before. Now, like it's giving me goosebumps thinking about it. Like they are tried and true. Yes. I be I've always wanted my kids to go to school, but I also have always felt that I needed to have something that was my own because of the fact that I love being a mom and I love being a wife, but. Sometimes it's just nice to be Kelly. Right. So I think that moms are going to pivot. I think that mm -hmm. moms are going to, they may go back to their job. Yeah. I think moms are also going to find out that they didn't care for what they were doing before mm. and are going to do something that they're super passionate about. Yes. And yeah. I agree with you right there. And, and it's funny that you said that because I was, I was going to say the same thing. I think that there is going to be a certain amount of moms who realize that their season of what they were doing yeah. was, was over before they even realized it. And this pandemic has caused them to realize it um, in a forceful way, right? But also to make sure that whatever they decide to reenter or decide to do, that they are truly passionate about it because we've never experienced something like this. Totally. Here, it's really making us look at the value and the worth of life and the things around us, right? Um, and, and we just can't afford to squander that anymore, you know? Um, yeah, totally. So I agree with you wholeheartedly that I, I, I think this is going to be an awakening for some moms. Um, I also think that we are, I would say, if I was ever going to bet on a group of people. Oh, 100%. Hands down. Hands down. My mom's got it every time because every time we're so resilient. And I love what you said, Kelly, about, you know, we do a lot in silence mm -hmm. because we do. We do a lot in silence. Um, even the parts that are dim and meek sometimes, we do a lot in silence. Um, but we do it because. It, it has our heart, right? Like that is, that is truly who, who we are. And so, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think we are a resilient group of people who will land on our feet one way or another and we will, and we will figure it out. Yeah, 100%. And it's, it's going to be, it's already cool to watch what's coming out of it now Yeah. and seeing what it's sparking and, Absolutely. you know, everybody has to do what's best for them. But sometimes the job that they were working was killing the light. And now there's opportunity to really look at what's going on. And what am I passionate about? And I want to go be pizza mom too, because that's important too. Yes. I, you know, I mean, I love pizza mom. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, talking about re re um like refinding the light or sparking the light or even yeah. awakening, right? I know for for you and I both, we've had an awakening um in the social justice realm. And so one of the yeah. beautiful things that has come out of you know, this pandemic um, and um, and actually both pandemics, because I call both of them a pandemic. One has just been going on for far longer, but um, we have been able to, you know, link arms and kind of join forces with Moms Who Lead With Love. And I, you know, I think that that is a great example of just how sometimes when you are being still through this pandemic, there are certain things that will grab hold of your attention and um, make you realize that there are things that, you know, for whatever reasons you haven't been paying attention to before or just didn't come to the forefront, you know, un until now. And so I, I like to think that this is definitely one of the things that I have been able to find light in for sure because it's a, it's a dynamic group of moms that I'm already just two months in and fully in love with, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully, I am very, very grateful for moms that leave with love. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's one of those things where, and we talk about this all the time, it's not a moment, this is a movement. Yeah. And yes, there's a lot, a lot of learning that needs to be done, but now we need to start doing. Yeah. We're, we're in that process now. And- oh, You're not gonna make me go get a tissue. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to start crying. But it's one of those things where, yeah, it it's important. And if you're coming to the march tomorrow, I can't wait to meet you. Um, but you shouldn't have to have the conversations that I don't have to have with my kids. Yeah. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Oh, but, oh my God. Yeah, no, moms that leave with love is yes. absolutely <laughs> grateful for everyone who is a part of moms that leave with love. Um, that I get to stand beside some incredible women, and I want my kids to know what's going on. Yeah. I want my kids to learn differently in school than what I learned, yeah. and we. It's unfortunate we're talking about this in 2020. Yeah, it, it is. It is, but I will say this is this is why we're resilient because at at the end of the day, our kids are our source of resilience. Like sure. they make us push harder, they make us go further, they make us do more, and they make us be better people. Um, so you know Yeah, one hundred percent. But also having other races and other cultures in your life and being able to have that encompass, it enriches your life. Yes. And I don't think that some think about it in that way. And I'm just really lucky. I'm really lucky that I see it and I want my kids to be a part of that and I want them to learn that. Yeah. That's hugely important. Absolutely. So. And I'm stoked about the march tomorrow. Yes, I can't wait. I am. I'm, I'm stoked about this weekend. It's going to be amazing. So thank you so much, Kelly. Before we like cry all of our makeup <laughs> and hair and every, you know, and look like a bloody mess, uh, can you please tell the people where, where to find you and how they can stay connected with you um, offline? Yeah, sure. So um, my company is Emerson Reese Creative. You can reach me on Facebook through Emerson Reese Creative, as well as Instagram. It's the same handle. Um, the website is almost finished. So you can see a landing page right now on emersonreesecreative.com. But um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Like send me a message, drop me a DM. That would be amazing to connect with you. Do you have any special goodies? um with emerson <laughs> reese creative because i know you're about to launch <laughs> yeah so um right now i'm doing um 90 minute strategy sessions for entrepreneurs to grow their businesses from five figures to six figures and i'm launching a year-long mastermind coming up mm -hmm. uh, in september so that's really exciting um so yeah i would love to talk to other moms sales sales and events of like 
true passions of mine. Yeah. So to be able to be impactful and watch others grow is a really cool thing to do. So yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Thank you for sharing your heart. Um, I did not intend for us to cry, but that's okay. Those were- It's okay. That real. Exactly. That people that's see real. how close we are. That's <laughs> real life. So thank you guys. And thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that this was impactful for you. I hope that you took away some nuggets from it. Also, remember, um, this is actually our last episode about- the back to school series. So in September, we'll be diving into a new topic and you'll be able to meet us back over on YouTube. Remember, head over there, subscribe, share it if you like it. And we'll see you next week, same day, same time. And remember friends, you can have whatever you want, but just remember that it's on your terms and your time. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Take care.